my friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany and today we are here to do another cook with me video. We're gonna do some of my favorites. So if you saw my last video, I will be embarking on a new weight loss journey um, and I am going to be doing the keto diet. So with that being said, that's um, very low carb, no sugar pretty much and um, high fat. Please don't mind my dog. She's just trotting all around here because it's quiet and I just started talking. Danny's outside building the trampoline with the boys but um, my voice is coming back slowly but surely but um, as I mentioned I, I'm going to be doing keto so I'm trying to go through some of like my favorite recipes before I get started on my diet so that I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything and one of my favorite things is pasta. I don't like it all the time but I do like a really good, rich pasta. So today we're gonna be making my cousin Susan's uh, penne alla vodka, and it is a delicious, rich recipe, and um, I had it the very first time I ever went to her house. We're actually headed there tomorrow for um, the holiday weekend, and I just love this recipe. It is really, really rich and delicious, but it's super, super simple, and it just is a great way to have a really delicious, full-bodied meal um, in an easy way. So we're gonna make the penne alla vodka. We're also going to be making a delicious banana cake. I made this when uh, COVID first started. It was a recipe that I had pinned on Pinterest for years, and I just never took the time to make, and I made it when we were first quarantined back in March of 2020, and my whole family loved it. Um, it's good for breakfast, it's good for dessert. So we're gonna be making that because it's something that I'm craving, and I would like to make that and yeah so let's just not waste any more time and let's get right into it to get us started today we are going to make our cake because we do need to let it cool so that we can frost it later so we're gonna get started with our cake and when that's in the oven we will get started on our dinner to get started we're going to turn on our oven at 275 that might seem a little bit bananas <laughs> no pun intended because you don't normally bake at a temperature so low however this recipe cooks low and slow and it turns out perfect so we're gonna get started by mashing up our bananas the recipe calls for three ripe bananas make sure that they are nice and ripe it's okay if they're a little bruised they're going to get uh, baked into your cake so that's okay but just make sure that they're really ripe the riper your banana the nice and sweet that it is I'm using my brand new copper bowl that I got for Christmas thanks to my mother-in-law and I'm going to use a fork to mash these up you could use a mixer if you wanted to you could use um, a a pastry cutter I'm just using a good old-fashioned fork mash those up give them a really good stir make sure that they're all ready to go into the rest of your cake and then you're gonna put that to the side we'll deal with that later next up we're going to start off like any normal recipe we're going to cream our butter and sugar together this recipe calls for two sticks of butter and it calls for uh, three cups of sugar now that is a lot of sugar I'm sorry two cups of sugar not three cups of sugar if you are not interested in putting that much sugar you could definitely substitute some of that for a sugar substitute um, but I will say I definitely do not think that it's too sweet I think it's just the right amount of sweetness next up you're gonna add in your eggs and you're going to do one egg at a time so add in an egg go ahead and cream that together add in the next one and so on until all three of your eggs are in your cake you want to make sure that your eggs are room temperature so if you forgot to leave them out no problem just add some really hot water into a cup and let your eggs sit for about five to six minutes and they will be room temperature and ready to go into anything you're making Now we're gonna go ahead and work on our dry ingredients. So I've got my three cups of flour here in 
uh, this mix, I'm sorry, in this measuring cup, I was going to say mixing cup. And now I'm adding in my fourth of a teaspoon of salt, as well as my one and a half teaspoons of baking soda and giving that a good sift with a, um, wire whisk. And we're going to put that to the side and now we're going to get our wet ingredients ready as well. So we've got, uh, our buttermilk here the recipe does call for one and a half cups so I'm starting off with one and now we're going to alternate our wet and dry ingredients so I'm starting off with a little bit of flour and then we're going to mix in a little bit of the buttermilk and we're going to alternate until all of our flour mixture and our buttermilk are combined Now that our batter is mostly together, we're gonna to go ahead and add in our bananas. We're going to mix this in here with just a rubber spatula. We're not gonna use the mixer anymore. We don't wanna over mix our um, cake batter. That will make it a little bit tough. So no need to use the mixer anymore. Just go ahead and stir in your bananas. And it was at this point that I realized we forgot to add in our vanilla. So we're also gonna be adding that in in just a moment. This batter is so delicious, you guys. You absolutely have to make sure you taste it while you are baking, uh, just because it is so incredibly good. So we're gonna go ahead and add in our vanilla. The recipe does call for two teaspoons of vanilla, which I appreciate. I love a lot of vanilla. Make sure you use a good vanilla when you're baking if you can. If you can't, that's okay. But if you can use a good vanilla, it does make a big difference. Go ahead and give that another stir and then you're gonna grab a nine by 13 pan and give it a good spray and it's gonna be time to pour our batter in and get it into the oven. Okay, so we have our cake in the oven. Now the cake is gonna take about an hour and 10 minutes to bake. Um, and you're gonna wanna check it at about the hour mark. Just put um, a, a knife or a um, toothpick into the middle and if it comes out clean, then you know it's ready. Just your normal way of checking a cake. 
While that's going, we're gonna get started on our sauce. Now this sauce does require a good amount of time to simmer. It also requires a lot of alcohol. So I don't want you to panic when you are making this recipe. You are going to cook all of the alcohol off. This is not going to get anybody in your family drunk. Do not worry. Uh, wouldn't that be lovely if we could get a little tipsy from our pasta, but that's just not a thing, okay? So we are going to be letting this simmer for a good amount of time and it's going to cook off all of that alcohol. So you're going to need to give yourself about 20 to 30 minutes for your sauce to simmer once you get everything combined. So keep that in mind when you're making your um, when you're making your sauce. And then my boys are making some um, hot chocolate in the background. So that's what you're hearing is the Keurig brewing some hot uh, water. But um, do not drop your pasta until the very, very, very end because you want your pasta al dente. You don't want it to be puffy and soft. So do not put your pasta in for too long. Don't just wait until your sauce has simmered for a very long time before you do that. So let's go ahead and get the pasta started. For this recipe, you're going to need a half a pound of prosciutto, one large onion, one can of crushed tomatoes, one quart of heavy cream, one cup of white wine, one cup of vodka, approximately four minced garlic cloves, Italian seasoning, red pepper flake, as well as some fresh chopped parsley for the top, some chicken broth, and some grated Parmesan. We're getting started by heating up some uh, extra virgin olive oil and some butter in a pan. That's probably around uh, two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil and two tablespoons of butter. That's what we're gonna saute our onion in today. And I'm gonna go ahead and dice up our onion. Now this recipe does call for a pound of prosciutto and we did not have the right prosciutto. And I take full responsibility for this. I sent Danny to the grocery store to get uh, my ingredients for me and I did not specify that I needed raw prosciutto and not cured prosciutto and that's okay. So normally if you're making this recipe you would start by um, chopping up and cubing your prosciutto um, and sauteing that in a little bit of extra virgin olive oil until it's crispy and then removing that into a bowl and draining out the fat and then using that same pan to saute your onion and everything the way that we're going forward however we're skipping that part because like I said we did not have the right prosciutto we are still going to add prosciutto it's just not going to be at this time so if you are doing this properly you're going to start with that and uh, go ahead and render that down get rid of the fat and then add a little bit extra olive oil and your butter and then add in your diced onion um, but like I said for us this is how we're getting started bring your diced onion over and get that going I love the sound of that sizzle it means you're cooking and the second that the onion hits a hot pan my family instantly starts saying oh it smells so good in here what are you making even though they'll all tell you they don't like onion it's their favorite smell it doesn't matter what I'm making if this is how it starts they all tell me how good it smells Go ahead and let that saute in your olive oil and your butter until they become a little bit translucent. Watch them so that they don't burn. And then go ahead and add in your garlic. So like I said, this calls for approximately four cloves of garlic. I put in a little extra. You guys know how I roll. I just put in three, you know, overflowing teaspoons there, uh, which probably was more around six cloves. Next up, go ahead and add in one cup of red wine. I'm using a Pinot Grigio today, and you're gonna let that cook for a couple of minutes to just kind of burn off some of that alcohol and combine with your other ingredients. Once you've given that a couple of minutes, go ahead and add in your crushed tomatoes. And fun fact, they only come in this big can like this, so if you're confused on what to get, this is what you're gonna grab and go ahead and give that a little stir until that's combined. Again, just kind of let that cook a little bit. You want your wine to reduce so that it doesn't, um, you know, that alcohol cooks off. Now you're gonna add in your heavy cream. Now I know you're probably thinking a whole quart, and yes, you put in a whole quart. This recipe calls for a very um, loose, 
uh, sauce. However, once you put it on your hot pasta, your pasta, your al dente pasta is going to suck it up and it's going to be absolutely divine. So do not skip anything. Don't try to change it. It is perfect just the way it is. Once you've got your heavy cream in there, go ahead and give that another really good stir. I kind of let this kind of come together for a minute or two before I added in the rest of my ingredients. So once it started to bubble just a little bit, that's when I decided to bring in the rest of my seasoning. So you're going to want to season this up really good. So start off with salt. I put in a pretty good amount, I thought. However, when I tasted it later, I went back and resalted. Go ahead and toss in some Italian seasoning. I would estimate that I probably put in about a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half, um, about a half a teaspoon of black pepper, and then just a couple of little zhuzhes here of crushed red pepper. And then go ahead and give that a good stir. And you're going to let this kind of simmer a little bit again. And then it's going to be time to add our vodka. So it's really important, my friends, that you remember to turn off your stove when you are adding your vodka. You don't want to flambe anything. That's not what we're doing today. So turn the heat off on your stove, then add in your one cup of vodka. I'm just using some regular Smirnoff vodka today and add that in. And then again, with a metal whisk, just combine it all together. It's going to smell divine and very, very strong, but I promise it's going to simmer off. So once you have that all combined, it's safe to turn your stove back on. I'm giving it a good smell because it just smells so incredible. And you're going to let that come to a simmer. Once it's bubbling again, you can turn it down a little bit, put a lid on it, and let that simmer for a good half an hour. While that's simmering, we are going to work on our prosciutto. Now, like I said, we were in a bit of a pickle because we did not have fresh prosciutto, but that's okay. We were going to make it work anyway. I was not going to skip this part, especially because prosciutto is expensive. So I just gave this a little bit of a cook that you can eat this just as it is. And usually you'll find it on um, charcuterie boards, but I just cooked it a little bit and then I added it into my sauce just to kind of let it soften in the sauce for a while. So I added that in while it simmered. That way it could soften. And then I also added in a little bit of chicken broth. This is to kind of cut all of the alcohol. So add a little bit of chicken broth, give it a good stir, and then give it a taste. This is really, really important when you are making this sauce. Taste it as you go because you're going to feel like you're over seasoning it or like you're putting too much salt but it's really important that you salt it because all of the ingredients that you're using don't have salt. So the only thing that has salt is this Parmesan cheese that I'm putting in right now. I think I probably put in about a half a cup. Um, I would have put in more except that I was tired of grating it. <laughs> I wish I had bought pre-grated, but I probably put in about a half a cup. It definitely could have used a little bit more. Um, but again, just taste your sauce as you go. Plus, it's absolutely delicious. But give it a good taste. You'll decide then if it needs more of something. Mine definitely needed more salt. The season, the taste was all good. It just needed the salt, especially after we added in all of that chicken stock and the vodka. It definitely needed more. So went ahead and added that in and then it was time to just put that lid back on and let it simmer away. The house smelled incredible. While that was going, I wanted to get started on the icing for the banana cake. So you're going to make just a traditional cream cheese buttercream. Um, so you're going to need one stick of butter, an eight ounce stick or cube or rectangle or bar. <laughs> of cream cheese, um, softened of course, make sure that it's nice and soft. And then the recipe calls for three and a half cups of powdered sugar. Now at first I was like, holy moly, that's like a lot of icing, but really it did not make a ridiculous amount. It also calls for a teaspoon of vanilla. I did like a teaspoon and a half. Um, fun fact, I just kind of used the lid that usually is about a teaspoon, but um, this definitely makes just the right amount of frosting. I also always use salted butter when I make buttercream of any kind. I think it just brings out the other flavors in the frosting. Um, 
but you just start by creaming your butter and your cream cheese and then add in your powdered sugar a little bit at a time and then also add in your um, vanilla another thing that I ended up doing was using just a little bit of half and half to kind of soften it up a little bit because it wasn't combining and com becoming very creamy the recipe didn't call for that, but every other buttercream recipe I've ever used calls for a little bit of heavy cream or milk or half and half. Um, so that's what I used today. Once it was all done and ready, I just put it to the side. I put a little bit of plastic wrap across the top so that it didn't get hard. And then it was time for the cake to come out. So my cake did take approximately an hour and a half to fully bake and um, maybe like an hour 25. And I'm just going to immediately put some plastic wrap across the top. It is still hot, so be very, very careful. But this is going to help lock in the moisture and this is what makes the cake extra delicious because it is so very moist. Go ahead and add this into your freezer. So what I'm doing here is just making sure that I put down some hot pads so that that super hot um, dish does not melt anything I have in the freezer, especially because my mother-in-law is so sweet. And when she sees meat on sale at the grocery store, she grabs it for us and I would hate for any of that to get damaged. So I put that in and then just add your cake in and let that sit in the freezer for about an hour. Now it's time while I'm waiting for my water to come to a boil, I'm going to cut up some French bread. Now this was a little bit extra crispy and crusty, but that is exactly how I wanted it because this is my favorite way to enjoy this vodka sauce. I love to dip this bread and just soak up the sauce and eat it that way. It makes the crust nice and soft. It's incredible. I probably had three while I was cooking. I had to make sure that the sauce tasted good. So that's my excuse, but absolutely want a good crusty bread to dip into the sauce. Now that our water is fully boiling, make sure you salt your water and we're going to drop two pounds of penne for this recipe. Now, it's very important that you pull your pasta before it is fully cooked. That is what al dente means, just a little bit of a bite. You want to make sure that it's not too soft and too overcooked so that when it starts to soak up all of your sauce, it gets too mushy. So you want it just just done with a little bit of a bite it only is going to take about five or six minutes and then you're going to dump that and get that into your bowl real life here i just kind of had it everywhere but that's okay make sure you get all your penne back into your bowl and then you're going to pour your sauce directly onto your pasta this is going to allow your pasta to just absorb a, a ton of that sauce. It is so very good. The other thing I will say is I did leave about a half a cup of sauce in the pan, and that was for anybody else who wanted to dip some bread like I did. Go ahead and give this a good stir to make sure that all of your penne is covered. The great thing about penne is it the sauce is going to go into the center of the pasta. It's going to be so very delicious. And the longer that this sits, the longer the pasta will absorb that sauce and will be more and more and more delicious. You can top it with some freshly grated Parmesan cheese and it is good to go. Now we're going to grab our banana cake out of the freezer and it's time to give this a good frosting. It's been in there for about 50 minutes or so. I did cut it a little bit short. Go ahead and take off your plastic wrap and you will see how soft and moist your cake is. Add all of that frosting onto the top. It's gonna feel like a lot because it's just kind of clumped there, but I promise you it spreads perfectly. Go ahead and spread this out evenly across your cake. And oh my goodness, I hope your mouth is watering. This is so incredible.
Okay, my friends, it may have taken like four hours to get all of this done, but it is done. My pasta is dished up and ready to be eaten. My cake is dished up and ready to be eaten. Oh my goodness, like can you even with this delicious looking cake? It is so moist from sitting in the freezer and it just allows for all that moisture to just go right back into the cake. It's amazing. So. Um, I'm not gonna lie and pretend like I haven't already had like 17 bites of this pasta already or like an entire piece of bread just dipped in the sauce. Danny's outside putting together the trampoline still and I brought out bread with pasta sauce just so he could have it. This is hands down the best pasta sauce I've ever had. Mm. I'm not sure there's any other sauce like this. It's just fantastic. I think the thing I love the most about that sauce is that you can still taste the alcohol. Like you can still taste the wine. You can still taste the vodka. It gives it such a deliciously rich flavor. And it's so good, the seasonings. Make sure that you salt it really, really well because um, none of the things that you put in there besides the Parmesan cheese are salted. So your crushed tomatoes, all that stuff, you're going to need to salt it really, really good. Man, it's just incredible. Okay, let's try our cake. This is what I've been dying for right here. Oh my gosh, it's so moist. Mm-hmm. It's like a banana banana bread with a cream cheese frosting. You guys. The inside is still a little bit warm. Wow. You want to spoil your family? Make this. Okay, my friends, that brings us to the end of another Cook With Me video. If you guys need a dish to make on New Year's Eve to spoil your family and show them how much you love and appreciate them, this is the one to do it. It is so good. Like, I cannot wait to just go sit down with my family and devour this right now, especially because it's super chilly outside. This is so warm and comforting. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And if you do make this recipe, please tag me on Instagram at Charlotte Grove Farmhouse. Until the next one, my friends, happy eating.